Hello, my name is Chris Herring. In this video I'll provide a basic introduction to the very counterintuitive concept of gyroscopic motion. So to do this we'll consider a spinning top that is spinning about at some angle theta from the vertical axis. So for anybody who has observed a top spinning in this manner before, you will have seen two very interesting characteristics of its motion. First of all, it does not topple over despite gravity trying to pull it over. And second of all, it will never just spin on the spot. Rather, it will actually process about some vertical axis, just like in the animation down here. Right, so for those of you who maybe haven't actually observed this before, there's no need to believe me go out and have a look for yourself because it's a very counterintuitive motion. It's not what we expect at all. Gravity is pulling it over, so it should fall over, right? And doesn't appear to be any forces causing it to rotate about, so why is it doing so? It's very interesting. So to begin to understand it, we can apply a coordinate system to the problem. See in here. So we'll select a stationary coordinate system, capital XYZ, uh, shown here with black vectors, where the XY plane here is just a horizontal surface. So gravity acts in the negative Z direction. Right now we'll select a rotating coordinate system shown with blue vectors here, lowercase XYZ, uh, that is fixed to the spinning top and processes with it but does not actually spin with it. So we'll align the lowercase z-axis so that it remains collinear with the spin vector and at this instance we'll let the lowercase x-axis be aligned with the uppercase x-axis. So at the instance shown here, because we have aligned the lowercase x with the uppercase x, uh, the lowercase z and the lowercase y are simply at still in the yz plane but at an angle theta from the at an angle theta from the capital Y and capital Z respectively. Okay, So uh, just as an aside, we'll go into more detail about this uh, in a later analysis, but the purpose of assigning this rotating coordinate system that moves with the spinning top but does not actually spin with it is that we can now represent the spin or the angular momentum of the top as some vector inside of a rotating coordinate system. So from our previous study on rotating coordinate systems, we have a pretty good idea how we can deal with this. Okay. So let us now look at the forces acting on the spinning top. If we assume that the tip that is in contact with the surface remains stationary, so it remains at this origin and does not move about, and we ignore uh, friction or any other energy losses, then the top will have some angular momentum, HO, about its axis of spin. And there will be some force of gravity acting downwards on the centre of mass, and this will create a, a perpendicular torque in the lowercase x direction. Right, so because this is still in the yz plane, the perpendicular torque will be in the lowercase x direction. Okay, and so these are all the factors that we're going to need to try and make sense of this weird gyroscopic motion that we observe. Okay, so to really make sense of it all, we can recall Newton's laws, Newton's second law of motion, which states that linear momentum is equal to the sum of the point masses times their velocities, and the same deal for angular momentum. And then we can take the time derivative to get the dynamic laws. So the change in linear momentum is equal to the sum of the forces and the change in angular momentum is equal to the sum of the moments. So it's this last one here that we're going to use to make sense of our gyroscopic motion problem. So we're keeping the math nice and simple here so there's no need for any calculations. Uh, the one observation that we're going to make about this equation here is that it is a vector equality. So that means that the magnitude and the direction must be equal. So let's not worry about the magnitude for now, let's just consider what the direction means. This means that the change in angular momentum must have the same direction as the change, 
must have the same direction as the sum of the moments. So if we look back now at a free body diagram of our system, we see that there is only one moment acting on the system. That is the torque due to gravity trying to pull the top over. So we can see that according to Newton's laws, the moment caused by gravity trying to pull the top over is actually creating a change in angular momentum in the lowercase x direction. So here we see that we've got a current angular momentum, HO, and we do the vector sum, put them heads to tail, of the change in angular momentum, and we can see that we're going to have our new angular momentum. Right? So this 3D diagram can be a fair bit confusing to actually see the direction of the vectors, so we'll consider the projection onto the YZ plane, so we'll look down the side, down the X axis, onto the YZ plane, and we'll look down the Z axis onto the XY plane. So first we'll look from the side, down the X axis, onto YZ. So here we have our side view, so we've got YZ, and we're looking down X. Right, so we can see that as the torque was applied entirely in the x direction, then there's going to be no change in angular momentum in the z direction, so it's entirely out, out of the page. So there's no change in angular momentum in the z direction, therefore there is nothing to change theta. This remains at this angle in the yz plane. So according to these basic laws of motion, there's nothing to increase theta, so there's nothing to topple the top over. Interesting, right? So now if we look from a top view, so we'll look from a top view down the z-axis onto xy, which will be just like this. Right, so we've got x, y, and we're looking down the z-axis so here we see there is some torque acting in the lowercase x direction due to gravity trying to pull the top over. Therefore there is also a change in angular momentum acting in the lowercase x direction. And then we've got a, the current angular momentum of the spinning top in the negative y direction here. So when we take the vector sum to find out the, the new angular momentum of the spinning top, we see that this moment acts at right angle to the current angular momentum, so taking the resultant vector, we see that the angular momentum of the spinning top has actually changed its directions. So now we can look at some time instants later, right, and we can see that the spinning top has actually rotated out of the YZ plane, thus the torque has changed directions as the top is leaning now at a different angle, uh, and so the torque will continue to act at right angles to the plane that that, that the top is leaning in, thus the change in angular momentum continues to act at a right angle, thereby continuing to cause the direction of the angular momentum of the spinning top to rotate in this xy plane around. Right, so that's what causes this uh, this very strange procession shown in, in the uh, animation down here. Right. So now it is of course important to remember that this diagram greatly exaggerates uh, dh, uh, giving it some length and implying from trigonometry that this hypotenuse here is of greater magnitude than the original angular momentum. Uh, whereas in actual fact dh is a derivative, uh, it is an infinitesimally small change, therefore this vector should have an infinitesimally small length, uh, and so the, the magnitude of the angular momentum will not change, uh, just its direction will change. Right. So here we've used the basic laws of motion to explain some extremely counterintuitive behaviour which can be really very difficult to wrap one's head around. Uh, so in the hopes of maybe clarifying a, a few questions, uh, I'll show you some more intuitive behaviour uh, using the same laws of motion. Right. So if we assume that so if we assume that the top is not spinning, so we'll come back to this free body diagram here. So if we assume that it is not spinning, therefore it has no angular momentum already, meaning that this HO vector 
uh, does not exist or it's, it's zero, uh, then instead of having a vector sum of h0 and uh, the change in angular momentum, which ends up causing this precession, what we actually have is just the change in angular momentum will continue to be in the lowercase x direction. And so it will start off at zero, and then the, uh, the, the force of the torque will slowly try to pull, it, it will slowly accelerate and increase the angular momentum of the spinning top in the lowercase x direction, causing it to topple over. So by right hand rule, if the angular momentum is in that direction and it's increasing in that direction, then the spinning top is going to topple over. Right. So there we have it. We've used uh, the same simple laws of motion to explain some very counterintuitive uh, motion of a spinning body and also the more intuitive motion of the body when it's not spinning. Right. So in the next video we'll look at how to calculate these magnitudes and uh, how to actually analyze our system and do something useful. Great.